Hello people! What I have for you today is an installation video of the Gilid, or Gilid, however you pronounce it, IC Vision Rev2. I'm going to be installing this heatsink on my GTX 470. Now, I got this heatsink because the stock fan of the GTX 470 is just, I don't know, rubbish. It's loud and my particular card got up to 90 degrees on full load which for me is unacceptable now I've already set up here everything I need for the installation I have right here this a stock heatsink that went right on the GPU now as a comparison if you look at the gillet and the stock heatsink both in size and thickness you can see that the gillet is a bit I don't know maybe a bit more than two times its size if you look at the heat pipes mm, they're about the same they're both copper but the gilded one is much larger and it has two much larger fans so you can see the thermal compound on it I'm gonna put that away this was the VRM heatsink the RAM heatsink and the fan I guess that by now everybody knows how one of these NVIDIA fans look like well, I'm gonna start this video with something very important. If you're gonna be installing an aftermarket GPU cooler, please, for the love of God, read the instructions. The instruction, the instruction for this one has 10 steps. In order to show you how important reading the instructions actually is, I have here all the stuff that came with it, screws, thermal pads, heat sinks, that are not required for my particular graphics card. So if you have an NVIDIA or an ATI, please read the instructions, figure out which parts you need and which parts you don't. Okay, now, uh, first of all, I have to clean the GPU and the RAM of the old thermal compound. I have here Arctic, Arctic Clean thermal compound remover and surface purifier. And I'm gonna be using this to clean the surface. I have here the poor man's way of doing it. Some toilet paper, of course. Now, Arctic uh, cooling for this uh, particular product says you should put a few drops on it and let it react for a few seconds and only then attempt to actually wipe it off. see if this works. Oh. I think it works quite nice. Let's get some more toilet paper, of course. This actually smells nice, smells like lemons. Cool. It's very important that you thoroughly clean your GPU and your RAM don't want some of the old thermal compound or thermal pads to still be on the GPU or on the RAM when you install the new heatsink. Now just judging by eye, I believe that there is no more thermal compound on there, but I'm gonna be using the surface purifier on it and I'm gonna show you that when I actually wipe it off there still is quite a bit of uh, thermal compound left on there. Okay. You see that? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean all the RAM chips and when I'm done I'm gonna resume the video. Alright, so I'm done with the cleaning part. The GPU is clean, the RAM chips are clean, also I cleaned the voltage regulators up here and up here. Now depending on what model or make of graphics card you have, you have to be really, really careful where you place your VRM heatsinks. You can use the stock heatsink as a guide. So you can see this, you know, was put on all the RAMs. These three pieces up here were up here, and the voltage voltage regulators down here, or the parts right down here, depending on your model you have to be really really careful because if you actually don't put heatsinks on some of these little babies it's gonna be 
really really funny you know funny as in buy a new graphics card funny now, I've already set up here everything I need these these little babies are my RAM heatsinks as you can see they are just as big as a RAM chip now what you need to do is get one of these therm thermal stickers now these are really really hard to peel off I've already tried this before and it wasn't very pleasant if I'm honest so you stick this onto the RAM give it a good press now there's a small very very small filament I have to peel off before actually sticking the RAM the heatsink onto the RAM chip and if you have big and clumsy hands like mine it's gonna be really really fun alright so I've peeled off peeled it off now you just have to position it on top of the RAM and give it a good push for about 10 seconds that's what Gilded recommends in order to assure a firm grip on it now I'm gonna do all the rest off camera so I don't bore you to death okay be back in a sec alright so I've got all the RAM and all the VRM heatsinks installed right now for my actual um, graphics card I've already you know looked up the proper uh, holes on the back plate and the proper spacers so this back plate gets installed right here and it all comes on top but before I do that Gillette actually gives you some uh, rubber spacers washers whatever I'll count them and they say you have to put these on the four holes on which you actually install the GPU so the heatsink of course not the GPU that was stupid something like this it's actually a little bit crooked so if I just can just find something to straighten it up yeah that's it you can see that the hole was yellow and it's now black you have to do this both on this side and on the four holes on the back side because these are the four holes that the GPU cooler uses right okay so I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back alright so now th this is done I have to say that these rubber washers are really good they have a little bit of glue on them and they stick really really nicely imagine if these didn't have anything on them having to put one on each side I think it would have been a bit of a nightmare now let's put the graphics card to the side and focus on the cooler now this back plate is actually held by four screws which I have right here now I'm gonna have to warn you these screws have a really 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 fine thread so you just gotta go easy on them and then just give them give them a, a little bit of tight on the end I, I can't really imagine if you were to actually damage one of these screw holes what you could do uh, also I've noticed that the gillet actually supplied you with much more thermal pads RAM chips and uh, rubber washers you see I've got quite a few left behind then you actually need now this is a good thing because for example if you want to put this cooler on the, in the future another card say a GTX 580 you could do that no problem without having to buy you know stupid washers or thermal contact material now as I said I'm go just gonna clean off the GPU and the heatsink one last time with a bit of surface purifier until I before I just get on with installing it now, I'm sure this is clean but you know maybe I touched it when I was installing it so I'm not really gonna take that chance that's what it's all about in changing a GPU heatsink is not taking your chances do it right the first time because if you don't do it right you're gonna have to buy a new graphics card uh, the connector let's talk about this one for a bit it comes with a 
four pin connector although only only three cables go into it so it's gonna fit like a charm in my graphics card which has four pins but if I don't know for some reason you want the fans to blow at full speed all the time you get one of these you know four pin to Molex or to one of these three pins you could plug this I don't know if into the motherboard or wherever you want it it's I don't know it's good to have that option I guess all right now the way we're gonna do this I'll position the cooler and I'm gonna put the graphics card on top Oh, actually like this haha uh -huh. very fine right but before I do that I gotta put the thermal contact material now Gillid actually where is it supplies you with this and I've heard that this is good but you know what I love my Noctuark thermal compound I've used this for about I don't know, half a year and it's the best stuff on the market at least from my point of view all right now uh, as you've seen on the stock cooler there is quite a bit of thermal compound on there so you've always heard people saying oh no don't put too much thermal compound that's true but with CPUs with GPUs you can put as much as you like and it's really good to spread it around because you can see that this GPU is quite large so first of all come on baby oh it comes out really hard I'm gonna put a bit. Now you can use a plastic spatula or something. I have just a you know, piece of plastic. And you spread this baby around. E Alright, so that was much harder than it actually had to be. Now you see, I've spread it out as best as I could. Anyway, when, when you put a cooler on it, the pressure is gonna really, really make it flat and even. Now, I've got the backplate, I've got a GPU, I've got my thermal compound, my heat sinks, so theoretically I'm good to go. But I'm gonna just plug this baby in right now because it's much easier than having to, you know, work my way beneath between the cooler and the graphics card. Now let's hope this goes in without any problems. And that it did good push now I'm gonna see what I do with this cable later now I'm just gonna focus on actually installing the GPU now uh, these four holes need to line up with these four spacers so uh, this is almost impossible to do on camera but what the heck that's no, no, no. that's it now you have these little small screws and first of all oh come on please work top tip try not to lose these like I was just about to now put them in very very gently don't tighten this up a bit one bit do it in an X pattern right Okay, so the last screw. Again, these have a very, very fine thread. Now, start tightening it up in an X, just like before, and do don't over tighten any one of them. Do it a bit, you know, this one a bit, this one a bit, this one a bit. That way, you ensure that the contact between the GPU and the cooler is perfect now oh because you have the rubber washers over tightening them is actually not a problem okay so now let's see what we've done Ta -da! this is the actually actual height of the card you can see that it's I don't know about half a slot larger than it used to be so, now that's about it. See you guys.